I've inspected this Johans A42 movement on a previous video, so I'm going to get right to work on it. I've let down the mainsprings and will remove them first. These Johans were ahead of their time when it comes to removing the mainspring barrels. Most clocks at this time were still needing a complete disassembly to remove the mainspring barrels. Mainspring barrel removal and maintenance is fast and simple with these Johans. Just remove this front mainspring barrel plate and they slide out nice and easy. More excess oil. Lots of levers to remove before the plates can be separated. On the back side, the chime wheels are held in with two fasteners and a tapered pin. Makes removal fast and easy. The chime mechanism is driven by this slotted arm that is driven from this pin on the drive arm. The drive arm is used to adjust the sequence timing of the chime wheel. Return spring for the three strike arms. Lots of levers to remove. This pivot has a lot of rust and is badly worn. The worn areas will need to be cut down to true it up in order to get the concave surface out of it, then polished. These plates have a lot of corrosion on them. Someone removed the protective lacquer coating in the past. Without the lacquer coating, brass oxidizes and corrodes quite quickly. If you look real closely at the reflective nature in this plate, you can see my face, but it's not real clear. I'll see if I can get some clarity back to it after it's cleaned and coated with lacquer. I ended up polishing all the pivots and installed about two dozen bushings. Other than that, everything was in good shape on this movement.
Now that it's cleaned, it's time to oil it up. It's already wanting to run. And wow, what a difference in the clarity of the reflection on this movement. It's almost like a mirror now. It's time to start on the case. First off, the back door panel is disbonded. It's quite loose. The door frame is still nice and tight. I'll put some tape on the wood just next to the glue seam. This will prevent most of the adhesive from getting onto the wood. I'll use some yellow wood glue for it. The tape really helps keep the glue off the wood. I'll use these pieces of particle board to stabilize and equalize the clamping pressure. The larger piece puts pressure on the door frame. The smaller one on the inside puts pressure on the panel. I'll let this sit overnight. Nice. The tape held back most of the glue. Nice clean glue lines. A little tape and glue here it comes off just fine. This tape sure leaves a nice clean joint line. Now the outside. Looking good so far. A little glue got under the tape on this lower corner. It cleans off real nicely with a damp cloth. Nice solid panel on the door again. Now this door latch. I'll tape off to the original marks left from the old plate. Now to make a transfer paper to duplicate the original to a new piece of brass. This is my low-tech version of how to reverse engineer a part.
Now mark the original fastener holes. I'll cut it from this sheet of brass. I cut it just a little bit larger to allow room to adjust as needed. I'll use the original fastener hole so it's identical to the original. This is going to work out just great. Center punch the fastener holes to an exact fit. Then I'll drill them out. Pre-fit using these needles as locating pins. Everything's looking good so far. The panel is thinner than the door frame. The original builders used larger and longer fasteners on the door than the panel. I've seen many of these where someone used too long of fasteners and the fasteners ended up going completely through the face of the panel. I'll measure all of these so this doesn't happen. I'll need to cut these shorters and plug the original holes with some wood wedges so the new nails are snug. Instead of using a hammer, it's safer to use large pliers on the longer fasteners. The larger the pliers, the more control you have on the pressure applied. With these two fasteners in place, I can locate the other four shorter ones. some tape on the brass to protect it from tool marks. The short ones are pushed in easily with just a tool and hand pressure.
Nice, it works just as intended. In time the brass will get a patina on it. Now it's time to do something with the dial. The copper on the door frame has a nice patina on it. The numbers are also copper and have the same patina on them. The patina should probably be preserved on the numbers so they match the rest of the hardware. Held in with five fasteners. These fine nippers grab the fasteners nice. They aren't strong enough to pull the fasteners out, so I'll use these heavier nippers for that. The fasteners need to be pulled straight out without prying on the dial face to avoid tool marks. The numbers are held in by copper wires bent over on the back, afraid of breaking them off, so we'll see about refinishing the dial, leaving them in place. The latch is simple. It's got a couple of nails that were added to it. One of them is giving a little extra spring pressure to the latch. Real simple but effective design. I've decided to leave the numbers intact on the dial. I don't want to clean the patina off of them or they'll look out of place. Once 100 year old patina is removed, it'll be a long time for it to come back. This tape will protect them while dealing with the resilvering process. The fast slow chime dials are held in with screws, so I'll remove them. Looking up close you can see scratches on the exposed brass. A lot of the exposed brass has oxidized to a dark blackish color.
First I'll use detergent to clean any grease and grime off. Then I'll use this abrasive cleaner next. Now to try some silvering powder and see if it plates. Now some cream of tartar. And it looks good. I sprayed some clear lacquer over it to protect the silvering from tarnishing. Remove this tape. It looks great. The movement has been running just fine on the test stand for about a week now. I'll manually run it through the chime sequence several times. Looking good. Time to mount it in the case. It sure looks good in there. Get the chime rods and hammers adjusted. Another nice Johans, ready to be enjoyed by its owners.